introduce Victor. He is the CEO and founder of Block Apps, the world's leading blockchain as a service platform for enterprise with over 1,000 projects and 200 customers, including John Hancock and BHP Billiton. Built on the Ethereum protocol, Block Apps is the first Microsoft certified blockchain solution and is deployed on major cloud provider platforms such as Microsoft Azure and Red Hat OpenShift. Customers have used Block Apps to build solutions for AML, KYC, collateral rebalancing, customer and employee loyalty, identity, core banking, supply chain, energy and resources, et cetera. Please join me in welcoming Victor Wong. So I was hoping this talk would be highly anticipated, so we were building up some additional anticipation. I hope that's okay. Um, be, before I get started, uh, since I'm in Texas, can you raise your hand if you're in the energy, oil, and gas sector? Wow. Okay. How about anyone in the financial industry? Okay. Very different ratios than normally I get. Okay. And one last question. How many people work for uh, Global 2000, a large corporation? Raise your hand. Okay, great. Um, so this talk is for you guys. Crypto anarchists, I apologize. <laughs> uh, so who is Block Apps? Block Apps was the world's first blockchain as a service company. We consider ourselves a general purpose blockchain platform for all industry verticals. Um, we actually launched the category of blockchain as a service with Microsoft and our partners consensus about a year and a half ago. And so it's easy to lead a category that you create. Um, we have over 200 customers, and these are in industries like finance, banking, insurance, but also in mining, government, and oil and gas. We were incubated by consensus, as uh, Joe Lubin talked about, and we were the first company to emerge from the consensus venture studio model. So within the blockchain space, we were really the first group that kind of focused on bringing Ethereum into enterprise. A lot of people at that time felt we were kind of crazy when we did that, but you know, it worked out. And so one of the things that we did was that we basically created our own Ethereum client, the Haskell implementation, and then we had to modify that for customers. So the first things they wanted to do was things that Jared had pointed out, like take out mining, change the consensus algorithm, put in permissioning. So we built that into the protocol, we made those changes, and now we're donating that back to the Ethereum Enterprise Alliance. In addition, we have the first production blockchain application for a Fortune 500 company outside the financial sector. So what is our approach? Um, we first and foremost don't believe in proprietary blockchains. What we mean by that is that we don't think one vendor, including ourselves, should own the protocol of the blockchain technology. We have to kind of develop an entire ecosystem so different customers can use it. Secondly, we want to be within that ecosystem, you know, the best solution possible. But we understand that there need to be other players. And then lastly, when we work with enterprises in government, they can't just support a blockchain system on themselves. They need help. So we work with them, and we work with their IT departments, system integrators, and their entire organization to help them bring these systems into full production. So let's talk about blockchain technology and the different types of use cases. Now, you may have heard you know, private and public, but I like to think of blockchain use cases in these three buckets. Public, so cryptocurrency aspects like Bitcoin and Ethereum, consortium, where you have intercompany use cases, where you try and get together uh, a bunch of players in a similar industries, banks, insurance companies, you know, resource companies, all together to agree to a standard. And then lastly, intracompany blockchain use cases. So any of you that work at a large Global 2000 knows that a large company is effectively a consortium of smaller organizations that have to work together. As I said, I'm going to disappoint the crypto anarchists. We, as block apps, do not focus on the public implementations. We're really focused on these consortium implementations and intracompany implementations. So why do companies want to explore blockchain technology in the first place? Well, the challenge is, in the blockchain world, what we call trust. So what 
in trust is that you don't have systems that everyone mutually agrees to. So what happens in a big company? You have one department who is doing something and they don't want to be on the hook for a mistake that another department does. So what happens? They wind up building up separate databases. For example, in one bank we've worked in, uh, this company has 800 plus Oracle databases. And these essentially track many of the same systems. So uh, many people call this the trust problem. I like to call this the finger pointing problem. Second problem is when you have 800 systems, you need the IT people to run it. You need the software licenses to run it. You need system integrators to make sure these systems never go down. Very expensive. And then lastly, how do you decide which of these systems is actually accurate at the end of the day? Well, most companies hire a bunch of compliance people. They hire a bunch of people to look at the systems afterwards, auditors, all of these people afterwards to figure out which of these many systems is actually running the truth. So another example is one bank we talked to in 2007, they had 70 people doing that job of compliance and operations. Any guess how big that team is today? It's 800 plus people, and they can't hire people fast enough. So how do you solve this problem? What you can use is a blockchain system that is a secure, multi-tenant, decentralized database. And what this solves is three main areas for companies. One, it's secure. You know, um, we've talked about the cryptographic assurances that are built into blockchain systems, and this is one aspect that really plays in blockchain's favor. Secondly, is you can automate a lot of these manual processes. As I mentioned, these 800 people, largely what they do is they look at two screens and they say, this is accurate, this is not. With smart contracts and blockchain systems, you can automate a lot of that away. And lastly, they want to create cost savings. By removing the number of systems and number of people required to maintain these systems, you can improve your overall bottom line. So at Block Apps, what we saw is a lot of companies implementing blockchain solutions ran into the same problems over and over again. The first problem they ran into was, how do I even start up a blockchain? So you know, um, they would hire a bunch of engineers, hack you know, download the open source things, hack it together to what they needed to do. And this would typically take them months. So working with Microsoft, we basically put a solution on Microsoft Azure that you can have your own blockchain system up and running in a couple of minutes. Secondly, they wanted to explore many, many blockchain use cases, not just around token exchange. They wanted to explore identity, assets, you know, business automations, all these use cases. So they needed a platform that could accommodate all of this. And this is one of the advantages of building on the Ethereum platform. Thirdly, they needed something to be production ready. They couldn't use the open source solutions. Their IT departments just put a stop to it. So they had to find a solution that allowed them to integrate into their existing IT infrastructure and launch this on-prem. And lastly, they did not want vendor lock-in. They wanted open standards. They were worried, what happens if block apps isn't around in two years? So they wanted to build on a system that they knew was viable and there was an open ecosystem to support it. So let's talk a little bit about some of the actual use cases that have been built on the Block Apps platform. Uh, BHP Billiton um, is our proud uh, provider to BHP Billiton. We worked with Consensus on their application, which is around supply chain tracking. I'll talk a little bit more about that one in a second. Secondly, uh, we worked with Minsheng Insurance. So they're a large China insurance company. I just came back from China and was talking to them. And their use case was around loyalty. So they were creating a sales incentive program that used loyalty, prog that used loyalty points as sort of a, a token-based um, incentive program. Thirdly, we worked with Fido Bank. So Fido Bank was a really interesting use case. They actually found our platform in and of themselves. And they had previously been trying to build uh, a proof of concept on another technology stack. They found it, spun it up on Azure, and in a couple weeks, they were able to build a prototype of a customer banking application, which included simple account transfers, loans, and basic AML KYC. 
And then lastly, we worked with John Hancock. So John Hancock is a large life insurance and financial services giant. They're part of the Manulife group. And their use case was around wealth management onboarding. They had a very complex process that involved multiple departments. And often, um, in order to onboard one customer, it took, typically took them between 8 to 12 months because those customers would get lost in the process. By moving it to a blockchain-based system, they estimated that they could cut the time to a couple weeks. Now, since we're in Texas and there are a lot of oil, gas, resource people here, let's talk a little bit more about BHP Billiton. I knew absolutely nothing about the mining industry before we worked on this use case. So, you know, if, if I'm incorrect, please, some of the experts in the room correct me. What BHP Billiton was trying to track was a asset known as a core sample. So the way they determine where to put a new mine or drilling operation is they send a drill out, they drill at different depths, and they move these uh, samples to different laboratories. So their blockchain solution really tried to solve two problems. One, they wanted to be able to see clearly how these samples were moving across third parties and different organizations, even within their company. So they wanted to effectively build an audit trail or a chain of custody so you could see where these samples were moving to. The second thing that they were trying to do is new data was being created around each of these core samples. So as it went to a lab, they would create a report. How do you attach that to the sample, so those two things are linked together. And so what they did with their blockchain system is they effectively created identities for these core samples and linked these offline reports to those identities. So one of the reasons I mentioned that people are exploring blockchain is mostly around cost savings. Um, this just gives you an idea of just some of the cost savings that are enabled by blockchain. Uh, uh, Joe was very coy about certain um, markets that are exploring blockchain very heavily. One of these markets that we're participating in is Dubai. And Dubai uh, announced when I was there as part of their Dubai Futures Accelerator that they wanted all their government records on the blockchain by 2020. Why do they want to do this? Because they estimate that they can save 25 million man hours a year by doing this. So where do these savings come from? If you ever go to a land registry office in Dubai, you'll see it immediately. You have to wait in line for a very long time. You have to get those records, and it usually takes days to return them to you. And often, by the time you receive them, the information is incorrect. Now, in addition, um, banks have been reported by groups like Accenture and Gardner as being able to save 12 to $20 billion a year by being able to implement blockchain technology. So where does BlockApps help these groups? Now, one of the things that we've seen as our customers have built blockchain applications is they need a stable interface in order to build these applications. And you know, one of the issues right now is that blockchain protocols are changing all the time. So if you build on the open source technologies, many of them have come to us afterwards. They said, oh, you know, I just upgraded my system, and now my application doesn't work anymore. Can you help me? So at BlockApps, what we did is we provided them a stable blockchain platform that implements these core blockchain protocols and is deployable on both public clouds like Microsoft Azure and on on-prem or other clouds using our partnership with Red Hat. Now, these customers are taking our technology and building all kinds of applications. These are just a couple of examples. ERP, supply chain management, workflow management, and enterprise performance management. But you know, there are many, many more that they're exploring. And I'm happy to talk about more of these uh, during my breakout session after this talk. And these are covering use cases in many industry verticals. So as I mentioned, uh, this I, I like to call our IT slide. So one of the problems that companies are running into when they're trying to implement their blockchain solutions is IT blocks it. They have all these what we call the illities. You know, how do I manage this blockchain solution? How can I get the best performance out of it? How can I scale it? How can I maintain it? How can I make sure it's secure? And all of these checkboxes, we've worked very hard with our customers to check off. So 
many of you probably are pretty excited about blockchain by hearing some of the great speakers. And by the way, uh, you should thank Tyler and Rice for bringing some of the incredible talent, like some of the thought leaders in the blockchain space in the world are here during this conference. So it's just an incredible experience. But in order for your company to really find a solution to work for you, I would suggest you kind of think about this checklist. One is, do you really need a blockchain at all? So a lot of times companies come to us and they say, I got this great idea for the blockchain. And I have to say, well, you know, you could actually build that with an existing database. You don't really need a blockchain to do that. So that's the first question. Secondly, is it a greenfield application? Is it a brand new application or is it trying to replace a legacy system? It's, it's very hard, given the current state of the technology, to build a blockchain system that adds a lot of value if you're trying to replace a highly efficient existing system. Thirdly, does it solve a real business problem? So I would advise you when you're thinking about looking at a blockchain use case, think about how do I provide the value? Are there a lot of manual labor required in this process already? If you have that, then probably that's a good case for a blockchain solution. And then lastly is that blockchain solutions enable new platforms to be created. So can this provide value for this organization? But can you expand it and can it increase in value over time? So let me give you an example of what I mean. In the John Hancock example, they were uh, basically helping coordinate between different internal departments within that organization. But in the next phase, they could bring on third parties that did some of that work. For example, document validators or notaries directly on that blockchain, and that would even make the system more efficient. So when you're thinking about blockchain use cases, think about that. Can this system provide value today? But as I bring in more partners, can it become more valuable in the future? So, where do you get started? First, I would suggest that you get some developers and you let them play around with the current state of the technology. Have them understand what is actually possible on blockchain technology today. Secondly, you want to uh, kind of spur more ideas. And we've had a lot of success working with different companies to do internal hackathons, where they bring together their internal developers plus uh, business people to really figure out where does blockchain make sense for their business. So to give you one example, we worked with a large Midwest insurance company. Prior to that, they had tried to build one prototype on a blockchain over a couple months. And within about two weeks, uh, doing internal training plus a hackathon, they were able to build 11 prototypes. And five of those are moving into more production-based systems. And then lastly, you really want to try and encourage rapid experimentation. So let some developers start building some rapid prototypes, show them to the lines of business, and then see if it makes sense before you start making more and more investments. And that's block apps. We're helping companies bring blockchain applications from POC all the way to production. Thank you very much. Yeah, uh, so we have a couple minutes for questions. Um, any questions about, any questions today? Yes. So, uh, last time you mentioned that there were 11 uh, prototypes possible to move forward. I was kind of interested in the reason something might not move forward. So, uh, yeah. So, so one of the big issues that we've seen in most blockchain, so to give you kind of a large perspective on blockchain projects, as I mentioned, over a thousand projects were built on our platform. Less than 5% of them are actually moving forward into more production system. And there are two main reasons for this. One is that they didn't get uh, either the IT departments within their organizations on side to understand, you know, how do I scale up this application? How do I manage this application later? 
then the second problem came when uh, they, you know, oftentimes IT would create an experiment or an innovation lab, and they would shop this to a line of business, and the line of business just couldn't make the economics of that application make sense. So one of the things with the hackathon we did that helped alleviate this problem is we trained up the IT department to understand the technology, and we had it judged by different lines of businesses who said, here are the areas I'm interested in looking at. So that's how, that's how we were able to get five success stories out of that. Any other questions? Uh, yes? So generally in deployment, do you find IT operations or finance accounting to be the most resistant to implementing blockchain? Uh, it, it really varies from organization to organization. You know, I, I think the important thing is that blockchain is part of a larger digital transformation trend where you know, we're talking about automation, we're talking about new systems. So, you know, one of the important things is really to bring together all of those players as early on to the process as possible. Yes? How about you price blockchain as a service? Yeah, so um, we have two pricing models. We have what we call self-serve. It's an incremental cost on top of your typical cloud instance on Azure or AWS. And then we have you know, production licenses that we provide, where we provide support, upgrades, all of these things. Um, is that it, or? Uh, one more, yes. Uh, is there a question in there? Or? <laughs> Sorry, what was the question? Do you not believe in it? Oh, uh, no, I, I actually do believe in the transformative power of blockchain. It's just every company has to pull its focus. So uh, a little bit to date myself, um, I started doing web development back in the early 90s. At that time, if, if you looked at what was happening on the web, there were some what was happening on the public internet was really boring. Like, literally, people would give me a brochure and say, make that into a website. What, where the really interesting um, use cases were happening were on intranets. So you had things like calendar sharing, you had file sharing, you had communication tools for the first time. So, you know, one of the reasons we picked this focus is that in order to grow the overall technology over time, we believe at this point in the market, it's important to focus on these enterprise use cases. But that doesn't preclude the public use cases. And in fact, we plan on donating a lot of what we're doing around the work of EEA to public Ethereum as well. Thank you very much. Thank you.